So let's suppose that the system we're dealing with is a conservative system. Now what that basically means is all the forces acting on our object in the system are conservative forces, such as for example the force of gravity. Now if that's the case, if only conservative forces are acting on our object in the system, well then the total mechanical energy, the sum of the kinetic and potential energy of our system will be constant, it will be conserved. Now stated another way, we can use the following formula which basically means the same thing as the statement. So the initial mechanical energy of our system is equal to the final mechanical energy of our system which is equal to some constant, simply some numerical value, some number. Now this side is simply the initial, the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energy. And this side, the right side, is simply the sum of the final kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy of our object. Now, recall the following two formulas. This is the formula for kinetic energy, one-half mass times velocity squared. And this is the formula for our gravitational potential energy, mass times gravitational constant times height. Now, we can replace these values, these variables, with these formulas. And we get the following useful equation. So 1 half mass V1 squared plus MGH1 equals 1 half mass V2 squared plus MGH2, where our V1 and V2 are the initial and final velocities of the object, and H1 and H2 are the initial and final heights of our object. Now, let's see where and how we can use this equation. How is this equation useful? Well, let's suppose that a ball with a mass of 10 kilograms begins from rest at the top of an inclined plane 10 meters high. Now, we want to calculate the final velocity of the object at the bottom of our inclined plane where the height is equal to zero. So we essentially want to use the following equation. So we want to find, calculate the initial kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy and then calculate the final kinetic energy and the final potential energy and use that equation to solve for our velocity. So let's begin with the initial. So initially our object is at rest and that means it has a velocity of zero meters per second. So our kinetic energy initially is zero. How about our gravitational potential energy? Well our gravitational potential energy given by this formula is simply mgh1 where m is 10 kilograms, g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and h1 is simply this distance, this height of 10 meters. So we plug in our values and we calculate our initial gravitational potential energy is 980 joules. Now, what about the final? Well, what happens when the object travels down? When, well, as the object travels downward, it begins to gain kinetic energy and at the same time it loses its gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is converted, is transformed into kinetic energy as the object rolls down the following frictionless inclined plane. So our initial, or actually our final, gravitational potential energy at the bottom is mgh, where h is our zero, because this represents the ground a height of zero. So at the final location, we have zero joules of gravitational potential energy. So that means all the energy has been converted into kinetic energy. So that means this value from part one represents the value for the kinetic energy at the bottom. Or equivalently, we can simply use this equation. So we want to solve for K2, so we simply bring everything to the left side and leave K2 on the right side, so we get K1 plus U1 minus U2, so we know what K1 is, that's zero, U1 is 980 joules, U2 is zero, we plug those values in, and we get 980 joules. 
So all the gravitational potential energy has been transformed into kinetic energy. And now we simply take our formula for kinetic energy and equate it to 980 joules. So we solve for our velocity and we find the velocity to be 14 meters per second. So we can see how this mechanical energy conservation concept can be very, very useful because whenever we talk about con uh, conservative systems and only conservative forces acting on our objects in our conservative systems, well, our total mechanical energy is always conserved.